welcome to my kingdom or welcome back to my kingdom thank you for existing my name is king zoe player i'm an event coordinator talent promoter and artist in my city of pittsburgh and today i'm going to be talking about the hard truth and some unpopular opinions that i have about sobriety before i get into anything i just want to say this video is not to offend anybody or scare anybody from getting sober these are just some opinions and things that i've recognized and patterns that i've noticed over the time of me becoming sober i've become sober from different things in the past, multiple substances. This is my second time becoming sober from alcohol specifically. So a lot of these will be directed towards getting sober from alcohol, but I also have experience in getting sober from other things. And I have friends that have gotten sober and have inspired me to get sober as well because I am in the rave scene. So I've seen a lot of people go through their trials and tribulations with substances. If you are getting sober or you know somebody who is getting sober right now, I just wanna say, I'm so proud of you. This is an impressive thing to do, a very brave thing to do. A lot of people don't have that kind of self-control or self-awareness. So yeah, I just, I'm glad you're still alive and I'm glad you're still here. Before I start to rant about things, make sure to like this video, leave a comment for engagement and subscribe and yeah, Let's get into it. The whole mindset of just wanting to better yourself and do better for yourself is the biggest step in sobriety. And eventually with practice and time, you will start to abstain from the substance. Abstaining from that substance will become a lot easier for you. And a lot of it is just keeping your mindset in a way that you want to better yourself and doing other things for yourself to replace the substance that will also better yourself. For example, I like to stay really productive, especially whenever I'm having urges or cravings or anything. It means that my mind isn't like stimulated enough in that moment because a lot of doing substances is stimulating yourself in order to escape from some kind of you know, trauma or something, at least that's my experience. And for me, I try to be as productive as possible. Like I'll start cleaning, I'll start making artwork, I'll start doing something that I need to do for a future upcoming party. And it does become difficult because I also have like ADHD and stuff like that. So it's hard for me sometimes, but I just try to think about how great my life is now and how much better it keeps on getting now that I've become sober from so many different substances before I think like, this is the third or fourth substance I have become sober from and you know, taking it step at a time. I mentioned that I wasn't trying to scare anybody with these, but this is a real hard fact. This is a real hard fact of sobriety and it is the nightmares and tremors. Specifically, I've noticed this with alcohol, with being sober from alcohol in the first like three months, I was having very bad tremors, very bad nightmares, strange nightmares that and I have a pretty active like dream cycle and I literally lucid dream. These dreams, I was not in control at all. I felt scared for the first time in a long time. I was actually scared of my dreams. So that was kind of crazy to go through, but it's gotten a lot better now. I'm at like the five month mark, which doesn't seem like a lot, but like it is, it's a decent amount. I have this little sober app on my phone. Side note, this kind of helps just me think about it. I'm a very like business oriented, monetary oriented type of person. So I put into my phone like how much I would normally actually spend on alcohol every week. And it's told me that I've saved over $1,500. That's a lot of money. That's how I was able to afford this tattoo. This is actually one of the main reasons I got this tattoo. If you saw my reel on Instagram, cough, cough, go follow. Anyway, um, but yeah, I got this tattoo because I was just as a reminder to myself that I can do it. That would probably be a way that I coped with the situation because now anytime I have urges and stuff, I just like look at this and realize that like I can do this shit and like it's like I'm doing such a good job and you're doing such a good job. Like I'm just glad you're still here. And like I said, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a doctor. I am just a person talking to themselves in their art studio. But I would highly, highly, highly recommend to speak with a doctor that you trust about your sobriety journey. I picked my therapist because I don't really like go to the doctor too often, kind of have trauma with doctor's offices. But you have to be talking to some kind of licensed physician at least about it. I don't know. That's just my experience because it can be very, very dangerous to get sober and cold turkey certain substances, including alcohol. And a lot of people don't even realize how 
dangerous being addicted to alcohol for one is, but also trying to stop it cold turkey can cause seizures. But I did tell my therapist when I was getting sober and, you know, I told her all about you know, my drinking habits, uh, why I was getting sober, and I filled her in on all the details so that they were aware and they could help me through my sobriety journey so I could do it in a safe and healthy way. I just want you guys to be safe and healthy. Make sure you find some kind of trusted doctor. It could be a therapist, it could be a psychiatrist. Um, don't feel scared about it. I know that like sometimes people are really afraid, but like, honestly, your health is really important and you staying alive is the most important thing. Making mistakes in sobriety or like relapsing is just part of the journey and it does not invalidate what you have already done and all of your hard work and all of your efforts and all of the things you've changed in your life up until this point. If you've relapsed and you get that really guilty feeling afterwards, that is completely a normal feeling, but don't feel like everything that you have done this far is for nothing because it's not this is another reason why that sober app like really helps me because like i've messed up a couple times probably like four times and like i'm not proud of messing up but i look at that app and i realize like i've still saved a lot of money and i have done so many things to better my life now that my head is thinking more clearly like don't let the guilt that you feel after messing up or relapsing or maybe doing something you shouldn't have done even if it's putting yourself in a situation you maybe wanted to abstain from because it triggers you don't feel bad for this and you should not feel bad for trying to get sober and having a couple times that you mess up it just comes with sobriety and it doesn't invalidate all of the things that you've already done to better your life a really big step to sobriety is literally like the biggest step is the self-awareness, is taking care of yourself and all of these things. So don't let it get you down. And you are just so strong and brave and the work that you're doing is impressive on its own. The fact that I am sober from the substances that I'm sober from, alcohol, coke, ketamine, all those, the fact that I am sober from them does not mean that I don't want to be around people who are like fucked up on those drugs. I am literally in the rave scene and I, I have to kind of deal with some of these things and that's not true for everyone some people might not want to be invited around those things that's fine for me it really bothers me whenever i see people like snort drugs in front of me that still really gets to me and i have to just like prepare myself for that if it's going to happen in front of me because i go to parties so often i literally throw parties i vend at parties people usually don't just do drugs on the dance floor but uh yeah, it really bothers me. And maybe if I'm at an after party or something and I see, I just try to like, there's so much going on that I try to prepare myself to look away, distract myself, focus on something else going on. Luckily at raves and after parties, there's a lot to focus on other than somebody snorting Coke in the corner. But like still, for me, I'm never going to tell my friends that they can't drink around me. I'm never going to tell my friends that they can't partake in some kind of substance that I don't partake in anymore. However, I have separated myself from people who use that substance in a way where it triggers me. That means if they're using it like every day or they're doing shady stuff or like just anything that makes me feel like they might have like a problem, it's hard for me to be around other people who are addicted to things, especially if they are addicted to the same things that I used to be and they were friends with me during that time. And I know a lot of other people have that you know, same experience and it's not uncommon to not want to socialize with the same people that you used to partake in that addiction with. And that's totally fine and normal, but I can still associate with people who drink and I can still associate with people who do a little coke here and there. It's just, I don't want to be in the bathroom stall with them watching it. I don't want to be offered it. I want them to know, Hey, go ahead. You can like be high around me, but like, I just don't want to see you doing it. You know what I mean? But that's like a big misconception is that people who are sober just straight up don't even want to go out anymore. Like I might have a little panic attack in the car, but I'll just drink my Red Bull, smoke my weed and be fine. Which brings me into my next point. Some people think, and this is probably one of my most controversial opinions that I have like in this video. Hear me out. Some people think that if you are not sober from every single substance under the sun, that you are not actually sober. And here's what I gotta say to that. Like I said, getting sober can be dangerous. Okay, for one, getting sober from a bunch of substances at once is even more dangerous. So we have to take it one step at a time. You feel me? That's how I did it. First I stopped Coke, then I stopped ketamine, then I stopped freaking 
alcohol and it's all like within separate years like it took me like four or five years to get to the point where i am now and that is completely normal and a very healthy way to do the journey you know what i mean i'm not saying i'm better than anybody else if y'all stopped all at once i hope that you're still alive <laughs> well, obviously you are because you're watching this but, you know that sounds scary but like it's just a dangerous thing to do another thing is weed is a medicine so for me Weed is a medicine. I have a lot of mental illnesses, a lot, to the point where pharmaceutical drugs don't work on me anymore. Like they give me way too many side effects because if we were to try to treat all of my major mental health issues, not even the ones that aren't major, the major ones, just like the three, the big three or whatever. Like if we just try to treat the big three, the side effects that combine are just heinous, awful. I, it actually ruined me more. Side note, if you guys want a video about how big pharma straight up made my mental health issues even freaking worse, comment down below. Sound off in the comments because I have a lot of, I got a lot of tea to spill about big pharma, but this isn't about that. So basically holistic medicine is the only thing that works for me anymore. It's all doctor approved. It's all psychiatrists, that, all of it's approved. All right. I have a medical card in the state of Pennsylvania. All of it's, you know, it's all legal. Okay. Don't come for me, but people will be like, oh, if you do that, then you're not sober. But like I smoke weed. I trip occasionally. I think that I'm still sober. If you are sober from the substance that you originally were addicted to, whatever your problem substance is, if you are sober from that substance or those substances, then you are sober. And that's, that's just my opinion. That's my opinion. Okay. Like that really is just my freaking opinion. And I know a lot of people are like 50, 50 about this. And it's even people in the rave scene and stuff that are 50, 50 about this. And I'm just like, look, that's just how it is. It's not easy getting sober. This is a very impressive and brave thing to do. Like if you are getting sober out there, literally you are amazing. You are, I'm proud of you. Like I'm actually like, I might not know you, but I'm familiar with the struggle and it is not freaking easy. And if anybody tries to tell you or, you know, degrade anything that you have done in sobriety, just like, don't let them. Like, I know it hurts. And I know it's hard to ignore the haters, but like these motherfuckers literally wish they could. And to have that level of self-awareness, self-care, and just love for yourself to better yourself is rare. And not a lot of people out in this world are like that. And we need more people in this world to stay alive. So I'm just really proud of you. And thank you for being alive, for real. As long as you are sober from the substance that is ruining your life, you are sober. You're allowed to call yourself that. I know there's all these other labels and Cali, California sober, whatever the hell. I don't care. Just call yourself sober. I still go to parties and go to raves and go to concerts and I love live music. I'm not a buzzkill just because I'm sober. A lot of people think that you can't like go out and have fun and like just... Sorry, that's my cat. A lot of people think that you literally like can't go out or do anything or enjoy the rave life, especially like there's so many people that think that all ravers just do a shitload of Molly all the time. Like there's honestly a lot of us who have seen our friends like die, commit suicide, all this other shit just because of drugs and what drugs do to us and our friends and just it's a mess, okay? We know, we know, we've seen it, which is one of the reasons why I was driven to get sober is seeing so many people just struggle with this shit. Ever since I've gotten sober, I've been able to remember things more. Who'd have thought? Literally. So I'm able to remember my friend's jokes. I'm able to remember funny dance moves that we made up. I'm able to remember like the entire concert, show, whatever experience that I'm doing, I'm able to remember it. And it's just, awesome because it makes the whole event more fulfilling. Lately, I have been getting so much more out of raves and concerts and just live music experiences now that I'm not like completely trashed on 87 picklebacks. So like I do miss the alcohol and stuff when I am at these events. And it's like a thing that people don't even want to say, but I will literally like let my friends know when I'm craving certain stuff. And if you have good friends, then like thank them right now because I, I love telling my friends I love them. I love telling them thank you. They literally take me out to boba and tea shops just to accommodate me and have fancy drinks with me and stuff. It's just really amazing to, it's just amazing to have nice friends that support you in sobriety and they still drink and do things that I don't do, but they are not assholes about it. And that's, you gotta figure out where that line is for you and you gotta stick to it because the second that you start going like this and going 
hanging out with people in a social setting that is not comfortable for you around your substances, this is going to be where you fuck up. That's where I fucked up, okay? Uh, no drinking at dinner. No, it's okay. This is a special occasion. Uh-uh. I have to, because once I start, I can't stop. All right? And that's, hey, that's normal. I feel like we normalize alcohol usage a lot. It's fine to tell yourself, hey, I need to stop. If you are getting sober or you know somebody who is getting sober, just recognize that that is a very beautiful and impressive, courageous, brave thing to do. I am so proud of you. This is not an easy journey and people will tell you all sorts of hateful and negative things during your journey, but just remember that you are amazing. Like you literally are doing something that a lot of people can't even say that they've even tried to do before. Trying to better yourself, and looking out for yourself in that way, taking care of yourself is such a beautiful thing to do. You will start to live a life that is way more fulfilling than before and you will notice it pretty quickly. I mean, I noticed it after just a couple months. We need more people in this world like you, so I'm just really proud of you for staying alive on this journey and I'm just really thankful that we have people like you out here. I don't know you, but I am familiar with the struggle of the journey and just know that you are not alone. I'm going through very similar things right now. If you would like me to talk more about my journey, just let me know in the comments below if you like these kind of videos. Remember that I have a merch store, kingzoeplur.com. If you would like my artwork, if you like anything that you see in the background of my videos, or if you would like to buy some Plur Kingdom merch, go check out kingzoeplur.com. I have an Instagram for all of the things that I do in life. One for my talent promotion company, at Plur Kingdom Promo. One for my main Instagram, which is Zoe Plur. And then I have one for my artwork, which is King's New Craft. I'm trying to make more videos lately since um, if you haven't watched my last video, go watch it. My life has changed a lot, so I have a lot more time on my hands to make videos. Uh, let me know what you would be interested in, maybe some video ideas below. Um, oh yeah, I have Twitter, uh, at King Zoe Plur. That's my artwork Twitter. Remember that anybody can be amazing if they just be themselves. You are just such a wonderful thing. You are gonna blossom and grow into something so beautiful and you already look so amazing. You are already doing so amazing. I just, I just have so much love today and I wanted to share it with y'all. I hope you have a great rest of your day or evening and goodbye.